Okay. First thing first, what is this topic is all about? The name of the, of the topic is project time cost trade off. Okay, project time cost trade off. Well, maybe it is very difficult to to to, uh, to guess what is this thing is all about. Uh, another title that we can uh, replace instead of saying project time cost trade off, uh, we can call it project crashing. Even that could be very confusing. What is what is there to crash? To crash actually, okay. And then project compression, or we can call it project compression, or simply project expediting. Project expediting is uh, to speed up the uh, the time of the project. Let's say initially, maybe uh, you receive the project and the client impose a two years uh, completion period, and you agree on. Okay, everybody agree. You and uh, the client agree that the project is going to run for two years. Okay, that would be normal situation. But then, uh, during the the project, while the project is running, there could be instruction from the client that the project have to be speed up, or the client asks you, "Can you complete within one half years?" instead of the original two years. Or you yourself can propose to the client based on what you, based on your experience, uh, you propose to the client, why can't we, we speed up the project? And it is for the benefit of both parties. The client can benefit from this and the contractor also can benefit actually. That could be due to uh, uh, what we call um, some kind of propose, okay? But then you are being forced to. You are being forced to due to certain reason. We are going to take a look at that reason. The issue is that if we compress the project, what could be the uh, cost of the new, uh, what could be the new cost for the project based on the new duration? Is it going to be reduced? Is it going to be increased or it will remain the same? Okay, that is the question mark. And if it is going to increase or reduce whatever, we want to know the new total cost. We want to know that what, what could be that cost. All right, that is the issue. Okay, you can uh, watch the video later on. I'm not going to play uh, in here because it will sometimes uh, lagging. Okay, before we go into all the details, now let's take a look at the project cost. Project cost, first thing first, value, some definition. We, uh, you are going to hear this, uh, the issue of this project cost or what we call definition or even uh, this equation again and again in a project cash flow. This is very important uh, formula, but it is very simple. This is what we call formula. Okay. First thing first, project value, or I can say contract value. Contract value is the one that you are getting from the client. So basically, this is from client. Client will pay you. Okay, contract value. We call it contract value. And then this is a direct cost plus indirect cost. I would say total construction cost. Total construction cost is equivalent to direct cost plus indirect cost. If you manage to construct a project, okay, you manage to construct a project complete based on what the client wants, for sure, you need to pay everything. That would be basically either will go inside the direct cost or indirect cost. But then, as a businessman, as a contractor, you still need to make some kind of profit. Okay, even though you can cover these uh, construction costs, it's fine. But then, as a businessman, you need to make profit. Okay, 
So the plus factor is basically plus profit. What could be the profit that you put? It depends. Okay. Sometimes people put it 20%, 25%, 30%, but eventually at the end of the day, it all uh, boils down into your ability to monitor and control project. If you are able to monitor and control project very closely, so perhaps you will get your targeted profit. Otherwise, um, your profit might be reduced, but still profitable. Okay, nobody do project uh, without any profit anyway, because if you notice the unit rate that people put in the tender is is a uh, might be twenty to thirty percent higher already. So based on that thing, you can make profit. So what is direct cost? Direct cost always related to the cost of material, labor, and machine and equipment. The three um, major items, okay, that make up a uh, what we call a project is basically goes into material, labor, and machineries, plus equipment. Okay, I would say around ninety percent of the project uh, construction cost will go into these uh, three main items. Then, the rest will go into what we call indirect costs. What could be the indirect costs? administrative, the computer usage, plus the internet, renting, and then partial cost of headquarters, okay? Even the headquarters of the contractor, uh, some portion are being paid based on a project, okay? And then personal salary, other than labor, okay? This is what we call management team, all basically being paid. And uh, the rest are basically preliminary, preliminary item. In uh, any contract, if you are familiar with a contract document, maybe perhaps you have learned in other class. So there are things that we call preliminary items, okay, including all these things, but there are some uh, extra, extra, extra. So all goes into indirect cost. Okay. When you add together indirect cost plus direct cost, that would be considered as construction costs. If you are able to cover the all these costs, direct costs, indirect costs, you will be basic, basically safe already. Everything will, will be already being paid except the profit. Okay. If for instance you're running uh, a project at uh, what we call um, this cost, this is what we call in business, we call it break even. You just simply break even. Everything being paid uh, for, but then there is no profit. No profit is still okay. But if you lost, you need to basically um, cover the extra cost uh, from your own pocket money. That is not good. Okay. All right. Time cost relationship. In project cash flow, you are going to, to see another graph, but this graph simply say maybe to certain extreme here, project project duration, let's say two years. This point indicate two years and two years. Let's say this point indicate two years of project. And this point indicate uh, perhaps one year one year, okay, one year, this is one year. So, indirect cost. Indirect cost is the, uh, the is, is about 90, 10% uh, of the uh, total construction cost is indirect cost, whereas direct cost is about 90%. When you add this uh, graph together, it will be this uh, total cost. Indirect cost is the cost that you have to pay uh, every day. It is like a fixed cost, similar to what uh, if we use that in our uh, finance, uh, personal accounting system, you yourself, for sure, when you uh, stay in the hostel or stay at the uh, uh, certain renting house, you have to pay the rent, utilities, etc., etc., communication, transportation, that is basically the cost that you cannot run away. 
So that's why we, we call it a fixed cost. So every month is about the same, even though sometimes it could be extra, but for the uh, calculation purposes, we call it uh, fixed. But then if you translate that into a, a project duration, or the longer you stay, or let's say instead of stay, uh, st studying in UTM uh, four years, but then you spend uh, five years or even uh, six years because you take a few subjects per semester. How about the, the indirect cost? For sure, you need to rent the house more and more and more and more or longer period, then you have to pay more. So that's why this graph indicate linear relationship with regard to uh, the duration of uh, uh, a project. The longer you stay, for sure, you need, we need to basically rent more, okay? Uh, we need to extend the, the renting period. We need to pay utilities, et cetera, et cetera. All right, then the direct cost. The direct cost, the nature of the direct cost, because it involves man, machine, and material, normally, uh, when the project is, uh, you, you are being forced to, to extend the period of the project, for sure you need to rent the machinery longer, isn't it? You cannot release the machinery yet because the work still remain to be done. It is like in COVID situation, okay? It was supposed to, your project supposed to finish in one year, but then COVID has been, uh, has basically forced you to stop work. So you cannot release, uh, perhaps, Example, you already purchased the material, but by that time, the material might not be usable anymore. Some of the um, formwork already damaged due to rain. Some of the steel already uh, rusted. Then you have to do something about that or replace or buy a new one. So the cost will basically increase. But then what happens if you try to compress the uh, project duration, instead of two years, you compress it, uh, let's say one and a half years. Oh, one and a half years supposed to be here. This is like one and a half years. This is like one quarter, okay? One quarter of the uh, project. There is possibility, the direct cost could be reduced. See, point, reduce in term of the cost here. Initial cost could be here. Initial cost could be here, but then it is reduced. Reduce here. And then if you reduce the duration, perhaps the responsibility that the project cost will be reduced again until uh, whichever the limit that you can reduce. Okay. In order to see this thing, that's why you need to do uh, some kind of simulation. If you do the project scheduling in the Microsoft or any computer somewhere, then you, you should be able to see. Once you reduce certain duration, then the project cost would be reduced subsequently. That is the situation. But then, if you try to reduce it further, okay, try to reduce it further, then the cost will be increased here. Okay, it starts to increase already from here to here. Then it will increase again increase again, okay, you see the cost will be increased due to this scale. And at the end of the day, it will be increased further. That is the so-called simulation based on this graph. Okay, for the direct cost. The indirect cost is straightforward. If you reduce the uh, duration of the project, for sure you don't have to pay renting uh, anymore. You don't have to pay the utilities. You don't have to pay for the cleaning services. You don't have to pay for many, many things. It will be, uh, that's why it is, we call it a linear relationship, straightforward relationship. But for direct costs, due to the nature it associated with uh, uh, material, labor, and machinery, that could be the situation, as in case of the video that I show you. What happened if, for instance, the project supposed to be uh, the normal duration is two years, but then we just compress uh, into 15 days, like, the project in China, uh, perhaps even uh, like 40 days. What could be the, uh, the new cost? 
Is it going to be increased or is it going to be reduced? For sure, the indirect cost is going to be reduced from two years goes into 15 days only. You can imagine how much saving that you can do. But how about the, the direct cost? That could be the, uh, the question mark. Okay. So, all right. Now, there is a word here, optimum cost. Okay, optimum cost. Let me erase some of these things first. Could be confused here. Yeah. All right. Now, there is a situation. Okay, set situation. When a scheduler, okay, when scheduler or project planner come up with the planning, a good project planner or scheduler should have something in mind, okay? Should have something in mind in terms of he do the planning or scheduling, he schedule the project so that the project can be completed within the allowable uh, time frame and at the lowest cost. That could be the, uh, uh, the best possible scheduling that you can uh, come out with. But the issue is that not many schedulers are creative or they don't, even, do, they don't even want to be creative. Why? Well, the, the, the company does, does not belong to him or her. So why bother reducing uh, uh, the, the, what we call the project cost because you are not going to get anything anyway unless the, the boss will, will uh, give some kind of motivation. Okay, if you can do the project scheduling, at the lowest possible cost, and then we are going to have some kind of saving. That saving will be converted into bonus. Some portion of the bonus will go into you and the rest of the project team. Uh, that is some kind of motivation. There are some organizations which basically do that, whereas majority don't even bother. That is the issue. Okay, Let's assume uh, you are a good planner, a responsible planner, and then basically you can, you are well versed, you can come up with the best possible scheduling. So why don't we assume that you do the scheduling based on this line? Okay, based on this line. Now let's assume that this line is uh, two years. And we don't have the uh, right portion of the graph line. Let's delete this line. Okay. Just focus on this line only. Okay, so meaning to say the graph that we want to focus is this graph, this graph, and this graph. Okay, this graph. This is the uh, indirect cost, indirect cost, sorry. Call it indirect cost, this is direct cost, this is total cost. Okay, two years. So meaning to say, everything is at the lowest in terms of uh, direct cost. When you add direct cost graph with indirect cost, for sure you are going to have this graph. So this total cost is basically the combination of both graph because 90% of the graph is coming from direct cost, which is uh, the uh, dominant uh, amount. When you add a big amount with a small amount, for sure it will, it will basically take after the uh, the one which is more dominant, okay? So when you try to reduce the project further, let's say you try to reduce the project here, maybe uh, uh, three quarter of the time, three quarter of the project, okay? This could be uh, middle, this is could be uh, uh, one and a half year, this is one and the third, three quarter of the project, okay? Let's see. So what happened to this uh, project cost? Indirect cost will basically somehow reduce. Just imagine from here, this point reduce here. How about the uh, uh, direct cost? Okay, direct cost, you just imagine here, this is the point, this is the lowest point. It basically increased. And even for one and a half year, it will basically increase more from the uh, benchmark there. See, it will increase. 
And when you want to compress until uh, at the end of the available project completion, one year, that is the, the, the end. You cannot compress anymore because it has become illogical. What happened to the cost of the project? It will basically increase again. Okay. Uh, that is the issue. Okay. You can see the, uh, the indirect cost could be reduced, reduced a little bit, not much. But how about the direct cost? The direct cost will be increased. How much is the increase? That is the concept that we are going to calculate. Actually, everything can be calculated based on whatever the assumption that we can make. This is what we want to know. This is what this topic is all about. If we reduce the project uh, duration, what could be the potential uh, new cost? Either in terms of indirect cost and then direct cost. When you add th this indirect cost together, indirect plus direct, for sure you are going to get the total cost. We are going to know the new total cost. What could be the new total cost? And the new duration, this is new duration. Uh, this is the, uh, what is this class is all about, okay? Assuming the scheduler already plan the project according to the best possible, um, basically the lowest possible project cost. That is the assumption. Eh? But in reality, in reality, this is the, the scenario. The project might not be scheduled uh, at the lowest possible cost. That is the, 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 the real scenario. But in our class, we just make assumption. We are not going to bother about the right side of the uh, this graph, okay? Otherwise, it's very difficult. You can do this uh, when you do the uh, uh, initial project planning at the at the beginning of the project. Maybe the consultant can do that, okay? Because they wanted to know what could be the range of the uh, possible costs, okay? As in the case of the contractor, not much that you can do because sometimes uh, you are being awarded the contract based on the agreed price. Okay. Cost uh, relationship with time. Okay. If we increase the project duration, for instance, increase mean, uh, now we are not going to bother about the right hand side of the uh, diagram. Increase mean, from the one year into uh, two years, that is the increase as being defined in this uh, graph. If you increase the project duration, for sure the direct cost will increase. Why? Because you, you still cannot let go your missionaries. You still cannot let go your labor. You still have to, uh, uh, for instance, the material. You still need to buy the material at perhaps higher cost. Let's say you delay the project duration. You cannot finish the project this year. And then you delay until next year or even uh, the following year. What would happen to the price of the material? Normally, from the experience, the price of the material will keep going up and up and up. Even the petrol also like that. Eh? So when the petrol going up and then the material, construction material is also going to go up. When the petrol going down, the, there is no people mentioning about reducing the price of the material. You see, that is the issue. How about indirect cost? For sure, indirect cost will increase. Why? Because if you increase the project duration, you see, the, uh, the site office, you will still have to keep the utilities, everything, the salary of the personnel, you have to keep. And when you plus this uh, direct cost, plus indirect cost, for sure you will get the total cost will, will be up as well. But then, how about if you decrease, you try to decrease the project duration. Now, instead of increase, now you go back, decrease from the original project duration. What would happen to the project cost? You see, the direct cost, uh, instead of reducing like the indirect cost, it could be going up. 
Why? Uh, if you watch the video that I have given you, perhaps you get some idea. In order to reduce the project uh, duration, for sure you need to speed up the project. How do you speed up the project? You need to speed up the project by increasing manpower, by increasing the number of machinery, not only the number, the bigger capacity of machinery, like in the video that I share with you, you also need to use different techniques. For, for instance, in Malaysia, we, uh, we relate that technique as IBS. In other countries, they do not call it IBS. In UK, for instance, they call it off-site construction. Why it is off-site? Because you do the fabrication in the factory, not on-site. On-site meaning to say you do the conventional construction step by step as if we have been doing that for, for many, many years. In all, uh, even until now, in all days, when you want to construct something, you start, you, you construct on the site. Even until now, okay? But then uh, people invented the technology. In Malaysia, we call it IBS. In other countries, they might call off-site, whatever. Uh, that is the situation, either on-site or off-site. Okay, if we use that IBS technology as what has been, uh, the China has been doing, even in, if you go to Forest City in JB there, uh, in uh, Iskandar, Malaysia, uh, they are building of the building there, Forest City. They, they did the construction very fast. Why? because they just simply use IBS technology. Okay, perhaps when they have that thing in volume, you can cut down into the cost. But uh, in general, in Malaysia, IBS technology is still uh, much more expensive because we do not have the volume yet. But in the case of Forest City, because the project is concentrated in that area only and uh, the project is being constructed by that developer only, then perhaps they can come up with the uh, better way of uh, uh, doing everything using the same kind of uh, design, material, etc. Okay, now reason for shortening. Why basically we want to shorten the project time or duration? Perhaps due to first reason, client request. Okay, client ask the contractor, can you reduce the project duration instead of two years? Uh, perhaps you can reduce, um, uh, how many months that you can reduce? Perhaps three months, six months. So if you reduce six months instead of two years, that would be one and a half years. Okay, but there is a limit to what you can reduce. You cannot reduce uh, in, in Malaysia, for instance, based on contractors capability there is not we have not seen any project that can go beyond uh, from uh, two years into two weeks uh, we have not seen that thing yet okay so the client requested sometime for instance why client requested uh, this is the client strategy sometime when client develop a big big project such as housing project, Normally, client will start with the phase one and then go into phase two, phase three, phase whatever phase. So for the phase one, sometimes the client wanted uh, the construction to be finished faster than what originally planned because for the sake of marketing purposes. The client wanted to open up, uh, to launch a uh, second phase. So if people see, oh, the first phase already completed very fast, then uh, people start uh, trying to uh, buy property in, when the second phase was uh, being launched. Uh, that is what we call marketing gimmick. So there is a possibility. Or even, uh, it is for the benefit of the client. Let's say client constructed, uh, the project is basically a hotel building. When the, the, the hotel is completed, then the client can open up the hotel and then start generating money. But then if the project is prolonged, 
being delay and delay and delay, the client is not going to be happy because there is no income coming uh, yet to the client. Uh, that could be the uh, motivation for the client. So the client requested the contractor and then asked, can you reduce the project into uh, how many months, by how many months? And then the client will ask, how, what, what could be the, 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 the potential cost? Either increase or decrease. Okay, the client wanted to know that thing. Then the second uh, reason, the delay incurred for earlier activities. Uh, this is exactly what happened during the COVID situation. So for the whole for the whole uh, 2020, uh, one year, perhaps the contractor can only work within a few months only. The rest are basically gone due to the lockdown and etc. So let's say the project is uh, planned for two years. So partly in 2020, and then uh, second part is basically in 2021. But you notice that, let's draw some uh, here. Let's say this is two years. So perhaps uh, this is two years. This is the first year. So the first year, contractor supposed to complete it, uh, almost 50%. Let's assume that way. But due to the COVID situation, contractor only managed to complete 50% of uh, no, half of the uh, one year, uh, what we call works, meaning to say only 25%. But the time uh, span is already one year. The time span is already 50%. The remaining is, is only 50% more in terms of timing. But then the work is 70% that you need to basically do. Ah, this is the situation where you need to compress the, uh, the plan activities that you plan, supposingly, if nothing happened, you are going to do activity in a relaxed mode. Nothing to rush, no rush, because you do not want to put your workforce uh, under a lot of pressure. Every, everybody will do the work uh, leisurely. But now, uh, just imagine, you have 75% of work to be completed in 50% of the time, just imagine. So meaning to say, this is when you are going to exercise what we call pro project crashing. You are being forced to, to do so. Similarly, okay, similarly, the, uh, the uh, number, number four, this is item number four. Weather forecast, okay. In Malaysia, we do not have the four season kind of things in Malaysia compared to other country, okay. Other country, they, they do have a spring, summer, fall, winter, whatever. In Malaysia, we only have a sort of uh, so-called two season, okay. Two season, rainy season and uh, uh, good weather season. Okay, now we are into a rainy season. Normally, uh, it was supposed to be end of the end of the year, but now it encroached into uh, the beginning of the year. But it was supposed to be our season, rainy season is on November and December. So meaning to say, if you get a project for one year, start from January until December, actually you can only work uh, in ten months only. The rest two months is basically is something that not much work outdoor activity that you can do. That's why if you are getting that kind of project one year, okay, one year, let's say one year. So you try to compress the project so that most of the outdoor activity can be completed within uh, 10 months. And the rest, when the roof is up already, then basically you can do the indoor activity, especially architectural works or some kind of building services work. So that's, that's how you utilize the, um, the time that you have, even though you might not have the complete uh, 12 months, but by looking at the, uh, the, the normal situation that happened every year based on weather forecast. 
so you can plan properly because the planning is you are the one that do the planning you must take a look at the whole situation okay that is the uh, factor number four which is quite similar to factor number two but factor number two can can be uh, uh, other than the weather situation there could be many situations number three contractor getting a new job ah, let's say suddenly you are doing your current job then as a contractor of course you are one of your activity is trying to get a new new tender always like that eh? contractor in one year they tried many many tenders but sometimes they are not getting one even one year so perhaps uh, during the uh, the recent uh, uh, project while they are doing the recent project then suddenly they receive news from other client that they are getting a new project oh that would be very good situation okay when they are getting a new project now there are two projects a which is uh, currently and now b b is a new project so a is still in progress when you are progressing you are using the equipment manpower and material let's uh, give an example of equipment okay so your equipment is still get stuck at project a whereas project b is now is going to start you might need the same equipment Okay, you might need the same equipment. Otherwise, you have to rent that equipment. Let's say you already own the equipment. And now that equipment is being used in project A. And now project B is coming up. So if that equipment is not available, then you are being forced to rent the machinery, which basically, uh, when you rent the machinery, then basically the issue of uh, economy is there. It is not uh to your own benefit when you rent from somebody they usually basically um, uh, the the renting cost is always higher than uh, when you own okay when you own because the profit is everything will go into you so you wanted to free either the machinery or even the manpower some key personnel when they finish it finish up the job in a they can be transferred into B. You don't have to rehire uh, or hire different people. Okay, you you just simply use up whatever the resources that you have. Even another example, form work. Form work you can use again and again. If you use a good form work system, they can be they can be used many many years. Okay, they can be used many many years. So you wanted to transfer the formwork into B so that you can save some of the costs. Uh, this is the strategy. So you speed up on the certain activities which you already plan in A to work at normal speed, but now you speed up in order to release, uh, to free the machinery, equipment, or even some kind of material such as formwork so that you can use in a new project. In that way, you can reduce the certain costs. And lastly, error in purchasing. You know what? You can uh, purchase material and then bring material to the construction site. Um, nowadays, client allow uh, some money to be paid to the client based on material on site. Previously, based on the contract, not much that you can claim unless you already put the material into the uh, into construction. Okay, you use up the material based on the real work. You you basically cannot uh, lie to the client. You just purchase the material. The material is not there, but then you claim that oh the material has been installed. The client will do the checking. Okay, the client only allow uh, maybe ten percent. I'm not really sure. You need to check the contract. Let's assume 10% on the material on site. Unless you already installed that material, then the, the client will pay everything. Okay. So let's assume you already purchased the material, maybe in anticipation of the price is going to go up. You just purchase, purchase the material in bulk and then you bring to the site. 
But then, uh, if you let the material stay there, uh, the material can get stolen or even uh, uh, rotten or decay due to material uh, due to the weather condition. So you wanted to use up the material, even though in the scheduling the, the activity might not be be uh, uh, started yet. So uh, this is where you basically uh, expedite, okay? certain activities, the earlier activity, so that the activity which basically require this material can be uh, speed up. So that you can install the material and then claim the payment from the client. So settle the problem. Uh, this could be a reason. There could be a, a lot more reason, et cetera, et cetera, but you can do the reading by yourself, but this is just an example. Okay, way to shorten. How to shorten the, uh, uh, what we call uh, certain activities or even project. Constraint can be eliminated. Remember, when you uh, uh, link uh, activities, you use finish to start, start to start, start to finish, or finish to finish with lag or lead relationship. The easiest way to connect activity is finish to start. But just imagine if you draw finish to start activity here, what happened to the duration of the project? You see, it will be longer. Now you can re, uh, reschedule or even um, what we call do different kind of relationship. You can use finish to start with a lead. When you use lead or negative, then basically you can reduce the project uh, duration because there are some overlapping activity. When you use start to start, much better. For sure, you can reduce the uh, uh, activity uh, duration because you, you start uh, two activity at the same time. But remember, when you do this, you are going to uh, use uh, two teams at the same time. Uh, when you use two teams, that is when you will see the, the, the increase in cost. So that's why we mentioned when you want to compress a project, there will always possibility that the project cost will be increased due to what reason? One of the reasons you need to use more people. Okay, example, when you use start to start relationship, for sure, you cannot use the same people working at two different places. That is a classic example. Eh? All right, constraint. Sometimes when you schedule the project, you put a constraint. You can check in Microsoft Project when you click uh, and activities, double click and activities, and then at advanced dialog box there, you can see there are a lot of constraint that you can input. Perhaps in my video, I, I'm not really sure. Maybe I didn't show the how to put constraint. Normally, you put constraint at the beginning of the project and at the end of the project. Do not put constraint in the middle of the project. When you put constraint in the middle of the project or activities, then when you do changes in terms of project start date, you will notice that the project is not, uh, certain activity are not moving. Why? Because you already lock certain activity to certain constraint date. So you can reduce the constraint. If you do not know how to use constraint, don't, don't put constraint in your project scheduling because the activity will be locked and it will not move. Even you, you change the date because uh, you, you forgot to, 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 to remove the constraint. That is the issue. Okay, number two, accelerate or crash. Crash meaning to say we, we compress. Instead of 10 days, why don't we just finish the project in five days? This is 10, five days. If you can do that for all the activities, for sure you are going to complete the project within uh, uh, less time than the original. Okay, if you are able to compress certain activities. All right, 
But remember, this uh, precaution, it is really, really feasible to completely crash, to completely crash either an activity or a project. What does that thing mean? Okay, when you want to compress the project duration, for sure in a project, there are activities. There are multiple activities uh, inside a project. There could be 100 activities or even 1,000 activities. You do not just simply uh, compress only one activity. If you just simply compress one activity, you are not going to see the impact. You see? So many to say, you must compress multiple activity. Multiple activities. Okay, multiple activities. That would be one thing. Or here, this is the concept. When you want to compress a project, you compress all activities. No, all activities. Activi all activities is no, 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 no. You do not do that also. You only compress multiple activities. Multiple meaning to say you select the activities, the best activities. Why? Because of this uh, issue, least cost. Okay, remember our assumption is that initially when you do planning, uh, you already uh, do the scheduling at the lowest cost. Okay, that is the assumption. When you compress a project, meaning to say you shorten the project duration, for sure you are going to see the increase in cost. You are going to see the increase in cost. But the increase in, in cost, we are going to limit the increase in cost to the minimum level. We do not the cost to be uh, to be exploded. Okay, beyond what we can afford. We, we notice that the increase in cost is there, but within, uh, within our control, we want to limit the increase in cost. So this is what we call the least cost. Even the cost might increase, but at minimum, uh, at minimum level cost. That's why we select only certain activities. You do not, uh, reduce the duration of all the activities. Otherwise, you are going to, um, to to what we call explode the project cost, which go beyond something that you can afford. No, no, no. We, we do a control, what kind of, we call it a reduction of a project uh, duration. At the end of the day, the increase in cost is in a control manner. Okay, uh, that is the issue. It is like uh, what we call dam. Okay, in a dam uh, operation, sometime during the rainy season, the water level will go up, but then you need to release the water. So when you release the water, you release in a controlled manner so that you do not want the, uh, the, the low area to be flooded. Okay. Uh, this is the same situation. When you want to increase the, uh, uh, when we want to shorten the project duration, the cost increase will be there, but within certain control manners. Okay, how to crash activities? How to reduce the activity uh, duration? Not just simply change from 10 days, okay, 10 days, and then you change into five days in your Microsoft project. No, no, that is not the concept. Remember, the duration of activity is, uh, we get the duration of activity based on productivity rate. Productivity rate is the one that we calculate. So when you want to reduce that thing, that has to be achieved through the calculation as well. So you just simply do not reduce into whatever duration that you want. Well, for the sake of uh, you want to see the impact, yes, but then they must be in control situation. Okay, first thing first, working activity on multiple shift. 
working activity on multiple shifts. Meaning to say, now you have to have the mentality as in the manufacturing sector. Okay, in manufacturing sector, uh, in factory, they normally have three shifts. Okay, one, two, three. They are working for 24 hours. Can you do that in construction? Well, some projects have to be uh, to be forced to do that, especially in the urban area, Kuala Lumpur and etc. Simply uh, due to the fact that uh, the heavy machinery are not being allowed to enter during the days. They can only bring the material during uh, at night. So, and then to reduce the noise level. Okay, so certain activity are being confined. So now you have to extend the work. Uh, the working hours. If you do that on multiple shifts, for sure you can reduce the duration of the project. Number two, extend working hours. Instead of working eight uh, hours per day, why don't you extend 10 hours per day? For sure you can complete uh, many, many activities. Okay, If you do that every day, huh? 10 hours. Bringing larger equipment. Remember, equipment are being associated with the output capacity. Output capacity. Okay. Output capacity. The bigger the output, the more expensive that you need to pay the rent or even uh, to purchase. You see, this is how the cost will increase. But bringing larger equipment can do the job faster. For instance, excavator. Instead of using a small bucket capacity uh, excavator, now you bring a big bucket so that you can excavate a uh, big, big uh, amount of uh, material. Number four, additional equipment. Bring as many equipment as possible. As you can see in the video. If you watch the video later on, you can notice how many crane needed in order to construct the building faster. Normally in a normal building project, the tower crane is only one. If the project is a just normal building, one tower crane is because sometimes the area itself is even constrained. You cannot put many. But if you go to the uh, now we are building the tallest building in Malaysia. If you notice there are multiple crane, that's why they can speed up the project. Eh? Number five, put more men or more labor workers. For sure, you, when you bring more people to the construction site, they can do many, many work uh, at the same time in different areas. Everything will be completed much faster. But putting more people on uh, the project, you need to pay more. Uh, that is how the, pro the cost will be increased. Lastly, number six, uh, by using more costly but more quickly installed material. Uh, this is exactly an example of IBS. IBS or we call it precast. Okay. Precast concrete, you use steel structure. Instead of a concrete structure, which basically require a lot of time in order to concrete, etc. Why don't we construct using a timber or even steel structure? Well, steel structure, you're just using bolt and nut. Basically, you can complete the structure within only a few days. Then you put the frame, uh, put the metal cladding. Okay, then you, you completed the, the, the whole buildings. But the issue is that sometimes steel could be more expensive uh, in our country because we do not produce that steel. Huh? That could be the issue. Even precast is a lot more expensive than the normal uh, concrete structure. Okay, that's how you uh, crash activities. Okay, now um, we will go into this uh, example. Uh, example in terms of productivity rate and then duration of activities and then the cost perhaps uh, by looking at this example, then basically you start to have ideas. How basically when we reduce the time, then the cost will increase. Okay, by looking at this example, 
perhaps you will get uh, an idea. Okay, now we are already uh, past one hour of class. We shall take a break. Okay, we shall take a break. Okay, let's take a short break, uh, five to ten minutes. We are going to come back. Now is what? 11, 10, in within uh, 10 minutes. Okay, let's take a break, 10 minute breaks. Okay, let me pause recording. Okay, now I want to uh, show you the relationship between um, time and cost based on the simple uh, activities. Let's say, what is this activities all about? Scaffolding. Let's say you want to erect scaffolding. Okay, scaffolding. This is what we call production. Production uh, capacity or output. Um, and crew size or basically combination of could be man, machine, and then tools. In this, in this uh, equation, we do not have any uh, machine. We just have scaffolding set. Let's say crew size four. What does crew size four mean? Consists of one scaffolding set, two laborer, one carpenter, and one carpenter for men. Okay. Based on this uh, so-called set number four here, four, how much can that crew install? Let's say that crew can install 1,300 square foot of scaffolding. You know scaffolding? Okay. We use scaffolding to um, uh, for brick laying, plastering, painting, etc., etc. Okay, that could be one scenario. Then, if we increase the crew to five, what does five mean? Uh, we still maintain one scaffolding set, but then we increase another carpenter. That's it. Okay, only one extra carpenter. What could be the uh, productivity? we can manage to install 1,600 uh, square foot of area or scaffolding. Then what happened if we put uh, one more extra labor, we call it six uh, crew, and then for sure the productivity or the output capacity of the work will increase. And then how about seven? Seven automatically, okay. For six and seven, we increase the number of scaffolding. Okay, one another one more set, and then uh, for seven also two scaffolding, but then we increase more on carpenter. The rest are basically the same. And what happened to the output capacity will also be increased. That is the relationship between the more uh, man machine material you put, for sure you will get a bigger uh, output capacity of works. Okay. And then based on uh, these people and then the scaffolding, we can calculate. This is based on unit rate. We already know unit rate on laborer equi uh, equipment, tools, scaffolding, but whatever available on the market, you simply can calculate. This is just an example. Okay. And then how do you calculate a duration? Always remember, Duration is based on our concept before productivity equivalent to quantity divided by time. If you want to calculate the uh, time, is basically quantity divided by productivity. Okay, let's assume this is the quantity, quantity of all the scaffolding that we need to install on that particular project or area. 84 uh, square foot. But this is just an example. We take the uh, four crew. Based on four crew, this is the productivity. And we are going to get this so-called duration of uh, scaffolding works duration. So based on that thing, we can do for each of the crew, uh, crew size, okay, what we are going to get. Okay, based on four crew, we are going to get this thing, but then we use, uh, we round 
uh, we round off into 65 days. For five crew, we are going to get this thing and then this is round off. And if, for instance, cost 64, we get this thing. This is without rounding off. But then if we use 65, okay, we will get these uh, values. Okay, you notice that if we use four crew, the cost, the round uh, rounded up, the cost is 34,000. But then if you use crew five, you notice the cost is decreasing a little bit. It was supposed to be increased, but now it is decreasing. Uh, now I will relate to something. But then we, if we increase the uh, crew into six, the cost will go up again. Why? Remember, seven crew consists of two scaffolding. So the, the, the most cost will be coming from set, scaffolding set, which is more expensive. So that's why the cost keep increasing. And similarly, uh, for seven, we can reduce the, the timing significantly, but then the cost will be increased. So what happened to uh, crew number five, where we, we see the reduction in cost? Now, let's go back to our first graph here. See, you notice, if I do not delete this, uh, the right-hand side graph, I already mentioned to you, this is the uh, long duration of the project, but if you reduce the uh, uh, project duration, there is possibility that the cost will be reduced. This is exactly what happened to this uh, example, you see? some reduction. But then if you try to reduce the project uh, time further, then it could be going up again, the cost. So as a scheduler, if you are creative, you are going to try to, to use the tool equipment that can basically um, uh, can give the optimum cost. So that's why the concept of optimum cost is being used in this graph. It just simply saying, uh, there is a possibility when you reduce, you play around with the timing of the project, there is possibility that you can come up with the uh, much lower cost. But it is not going to be easy. Only a creative, well-experienced scheduler can do that. Normal people won't, won't, won't be able to see, or sometimes people are simply lazy. As I already mentioned to you, what is the point of, uh, what is the point of reducing the project uh, duration or project cost because you are not going to get anything. The saving, whatever, will go to the company and the company, the boss will enjoy the, 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 the extra money there. Uh, that is the mentality that normally people have. Okay, so now you see the relationship between uh, what we call the, the duration of the project and the cost. We can play around with different variation of uh, machinery, a man and material that we can play around and then subsequently it will affect the uh, project duration and cost. And you know what? If you plot that uh, variation of crew size with regard to the, to the cost, you can see different point being plot, plotted there. So based on that relationship, later on we are going to relate to so-called uh, general uh, relationship between duration and the cost of project. So every activity, they should have some kind of relationship, except that um, sometimes we make generalization. Okay, we make generalization for calculation purposes. It might not be exactly like that, but for calculation purposes, we must have some kind of generalization. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Okay, so this uh, figure is very important so that we can relate to um, if we want to reduce the project duration later on, we can see the relationship. That is the concept. Okay, you know what? The, the graph that we show here is like straight relationship, isn't it? Straight line. It is like this. Straight line here, the dotted line. But in reality, 
when you when you basically do the relationship uh, with activity and then the project cost you will see the line is going to be curved like this and this curve sounds uh, looks very familiar here this curve looks very familiar what is this curve if you go back to the first graph that i show you so the curve is this is the curve okay the curve that i show you this is the one uh, this is what we have been talking if uh, we use direct cost it will be like this but if we refer to indirect uh, the total cost it still be a curve so this is the exact things that this graph is all about but the issue is that okay this is curve is exactly what the previous graph has been uh, exposed to you this is what we call normal duration the longest duration but if you crash the project this is what we call crash duration okay and the relationship is basically curved it is not the straight line but something curve is very difficult to to relate actually in uh, academic world whatever so we just simply assume straight line relationship between what we call the project uh, duration and then the issue of cost okay that is our basis so based on that basis now we do have one definition that we are going to uh, relate to uh, this exercise in this uh, what we call topic we call it cost slope cost slope so cost slope okay first thing first remember when we do a project in normal duration the cost is not going to be a lot this is what we call normal cost normal cost okay but then if we crash the project crash 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 until uh, we completely crash until the end of what we can crash you notice what happened to the cost it will be increased this is what we call the crash cost based on that kind of relationship two point here this is the first point and then this is the end point we get this line this line this line we call it cost slope so how to calculate cost slope well simply the cost slope is given in this formula okay you just deduct the cost the higher cost let's say normal normal duration is uh, 10 days and then crash duration is six days okay and then, uh, for instance, uh, the normal cost would be 6,000. And then the crash cost would be 10,000. And based on this formula, you take the biggest value first, CC, which is 10,000. Deduct by the lowest cost, 6,000. So basically the difference. So this tangent, this line is basically the tangent, simple in mathematical formula. Then the biggest uh, duration minus the crash duration six. Then you will get the difference. 4,000 divided by, is it four or six? Okay. Uh, 10, uh, okay, sorry. This is going to be four. Four this. This could be four, let's say four. This four. Ten minus four equal to six. Then you will get something like six, 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 uh, four thousand, six, six, seven, six, six, seven RM per day. What does this RM per day mean? It is like a unit. Eh? When you have something per, it is like a unit. This simply means if you want to reduce the project from 10 days, let's say the original project is 10 days, you want to reduce uh, like nine days only from original nine days. So meaning to say you are reducing one day only. And that one day of reduction 
will increase, okay, will increase uh, the cost by this one, this one. So this is what the, the cost slope is all about, the increase in cost. By how much? This is the one, okay, we already calculated. So this is what uh, this example is all about. Okay, similar example, let's assume uh, one activity, the original cost is, uh, the original duration is 10 days, but then this activity can be crashed, okay? Can be crashed up to four days, the maximum can be crashed for this. For sure, if you do uh, activity 10 days, the cost is only uh, not a lot, 6,000. But if you crash the activities by four days, the cost is going to be skyrocketed like 10K. So how do you calculate the cost slope here? Cost slope is the differences between the cost divided by the differences between the duration. Then you get one equation. Okay, one equation, okay, six, six, seven per day. So meaning to say, the original duration is 10 days. 10 days equivalent to uh, 6K, 6,000. If you want to reduce the project, become nine days, meaning to say, now the cost will be increased by 6,000 plus six, six, seven. If you want to increase the, decrease the project duration into eight days, meaning to say now 6,000 plus 667 plus another 667. So 667 is like a factor for, for easier calculation. Okay, for easier calculation, if the client asks you, okay, now the project is original duration is 10 days. Now I want you to reduce uh, in uh, into seven days, how much does it cost? So you must have some kind of figure to give to the client or suggest to the client. If the client say, okay, oh, not much increase, but okay, I agree. Can you do that? Okay, I will pay you extra. Uh, this is the concept that we have been talking about. Okay, if you want to reduce the project duration or activity duration, uh, then how much does it cost? So cost slope uh, is being calculated based on activities. So meaning to say, if you have 1000 activity at your, uh, in your project, meaning to say there is a cost slope for every one activities, you can calculate. Okay, you can calculate that, but then you only use, uh, you only use, um, you are not going to, to reduce all activities, you are only going to select the best activity so that when there is an increase of cost, when you calculate it, you total up, it will not be a lot. Okay, that is the idea. Okay, now we are going to go into the calculation because this subject do have calculation. And you notice that uh, everything that we learn in second half of the class is the application of planning and scheduling. So that's why we learn planning and scheduling uh, very quickly after we completed the first three, three weeks of the class uh, on the, the introduction of uh, construction project, project management, etc. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Then we quickly go into project planning and scheduling. Why? Because we want to apply into so many things. First, we already apply in project leveling and smoothing. Now we want to apply into project crashing. And then next week, we are going to apply into project cash flow. And then later on, we will apply planning scheduling into project monitoring and control. You see the application. Now, step number one, solve the network. When we say solve the network, you can use AOA diagram or AON or even PDM diagram. So because what we need is just solving the network first. Okay, so meaning to say, now by now you should be able to solve the network diagram using whatever method. Okay, perhaps some of you already done uh, assignment number two. 
assignment number two is all about planning and scheduling. By now, you should be able to solve any network diagram. Uh, and then you calculate early start, early finish, late start, late finish, total float, etc. Because we are going to use that thing inside uh, this uh, concept. To determine the normal duration, critical pass, etc. Okay, now we already completed on that thing. Second, calculate the cost slope. Okay, calculate the cost slope. In order to calculate the cost slope, there will be assumption uh, given, okay, uh, in uh, the uh, what we call um, question. But in reality, you are the one uh, have to decide. You are the one uh, have to decide. Simple. Simple relationship. Let's say you want to travel between Kuala Lumpur to JB. Okay. There are many modes of transportation. Normally, the fastest uh, mode of transportation would be the most uh, expensive, isn't it? If you go for slow, you can uh, ride the bicycle on the highway. But how about the cost? Very minimum, but it will take uh, days. You see, that this is the concept. So you need to basically, uh, you, you can uh, have a cost slope or cost uh, time cost relationship for each of the activity. You can calculate based on the logic. Okay. Number three, start shortening by selecting the critical activity. Okay. The keyword is here critical activities. Why critical activities? You have to remember, critical activities is the one that determine the overall project duration. Remember, we already established the concept. The overall project duration is being derived by critical path. Remember, the critical path is the one that determine the project duration. It is very you don't have to solve the network until the end. From uh, forward path, you already know which one is basically the longest route from the start of the project and from the start of the activity until the end of the activity. That basically determine the project duration. So similarly, if you want to compress project, you need to take focus on the critical activity because the critical activity is the one that determine the project duration. Only compressing the activity on the critical that will reduce the project duration. So now you already know, if you compress activity, which is not on critical path, uh, you are doing something which is basically useless. The project is not going to be reduced, but then there is already additional cost. Because remember, from the cost load, anything that you reduce, because every activity has the uh, uh, the uh, the cost slope there, any any activity that you will reduce one day, then you will see the increase in cost already. So why you want to increase the cost while not re, uh, while there is no reduction in the project duration, because the objective is to reduce the project duration, then subsequently the cost will be increased for sure. But when the cost increase, we are not going to have cost increase as big as uh, we basically do not want. We want the cost increase within manageable or acceptable range. This is what we call the least cost slope. Choose the, the cost slope which is basically have a smaller value first. Then if you do not have a choice, you still you want to reduce the overall project duration, you have no choice, then basically you have to go for the uh, the higher value cost slope because you have no choice. When you add those things up, then it will form the total project cost. Okay. But the idea is that you do the crashing of the project step by step, not just in one go. Okay. Then I will show you what could be the step later on. I sometimes I call it not step, I call it cycle. Cycle number one, cycle number two, cycle number three, doesn't matter. Number five, look for the fashion of second, third, 
and so-called critical path. You know what? In most of our project sample that we gave you, you notice that there is only one critical path in that network diagram. In reality, it is not limited to on one, only one. It could be multiple critical paths. Okay, remember that critical path is not only one. It can be multiple. But in our pro, in our class, we just give you a very small, uh, small uh, project, only a few activities. That's why normally we do not have more than one. But when you do project crashing, you notice that. The, the formation of the critical path will be uh, keep adding up. You start with a single multiple uh, critical path, then suddenly you will see second critical path is being formed. Then you will see the third one, then you see the fourth one, and then you will see all the, the paths now become critical. When all the paths become critical, it makes the job of trying to compress the project. Uh, sometimes it could be very difficult because you need to compress almost every activity. Then the cost will be higher and higher because every activity will have to be compressed because every activity has the cost slope. That is the issue. Okay. Then number six. After shortening the crashing, after shortening or crashing process, completed, determine the new direct cost. Remember how to get the total cost. Total cost equal to direct cost plus indirect cost. When you add this cost together, then only you are going to have a new uh, total cost. We want to have the new total cost and the new project duration. Okay, this is our objective. We want to know how much is the new total cost and um, how many days can we complete the project after we do the project crashing exercise. That is what this class is all about. Trying to get this thing, all right? Okay, now we go into one simple example first before we go into a full scale example. Okay, let's give an example of three project, uh, three activities, A, B, C. Okay, this I'm using A O A diagram. Okay, A O A diagram. There are only three activities: A, B, and C. A is ten days. B is nine days, and then C is eight days. So the connection of the, uh, the relationship between uh, this activity are interconnected. They do have uh, dummy activities here and here, doesn't matter. And if I solve this network diagram, I start with zero. Zero plus 10 equivalent to 10. That would be one uh, answer. But how about B? B, okay, B is here. 0 plus 9 equivalent to 9, okay? And 9 plus 0, this is what we call uh, dummy number 1 and dummy number 2. 9 plus 0 equivalent to 9 here, 9. How about C? 0 plus 8 equivalent to 8. 8 plus 0 equivalent to 8. So for C, there is 8. You notice there are three values, 8, 9, and 10. So the highest value, the biggest value would be 10. So that's why 10 is there and 10 is the overall project duration. So uh, we already solved the network diagram. Uh, we already know that the project will end in 10 days. And how about the critical path? For sure, the critical path is basically line A, activity this line. Okay, that is very important. Identify the critical path. Solve the network. When you solve the network, you will get the uh, you will automatically get the uh, critical path because that is important. If you do have a yellow highlighter, you highlight those things first. Okay. So based on this concept, then we are going to do 
project shortening. Okay, before we go into that, you notice there is a here information first. Three at hundred ringgit, hundred dollar per day. What is this thing? Three meaning to say we just put note here. Activity A can be compressed by three days, the maximum. By three days meaning to say, uh, the original is ten days. If we deduct three days, meaning to say the remaining is seven days. So we can only uh, compress activity day uh, activity A by three days only, and each day will cost around one hundred dollar. Ataupun what we call this is what we call cost loop. This is cost slope. Okay, cost slope is for each activity is there. You just indicate that. So similarly for activity B, three days is the given one, and then cost uh, slightly less, seventy five ringgit, and then activity C also three days at fifty ringgit. Okay, now let's go for the first one. Okay, remember. Uh, let's say the original, the normal cost. Let's say the normal cost for this project is five thousand. Is given, five thousand. Okay, and what could be the normal duration? Normal duration is ten days, based on our calculation here. Now, let's assume for the first step or first cycle, I want to reduce the duration of the project from nine days into. Uh, ten days into nine days. What could be the cost? Uh, that is the the exercise. Okay, based on this diagram, item number one, you already solved the network. Calculate the cost slope. Cost slope is given. If it is not given, then you can calculate. Okay, step one and two already finished. Step number three. Start shortening by selecting critical activities. Okay, you notice that the critical activity is only activity A, but then activity A costs one hundred ringgit. If you want to reduce, which is more expensive than B and C, the least expensive is basically fifty ringgit C. Can you reduce? Uh, from nine days into uh, uh, from nine uh, from ten days into nine days by taking C into consideration first simply cannot because let's assume okay how to reduce the uh, the uh, activity simply you slash this one into seven so meaning to say from three to two the remaining is two days that you can slash. If you slash activity duration uh, for C from eight into seven, because you are thinking that you are going to slash the project by one day, what would happen to the project? If you do the recalculation again, well, by slashing activity C, it doesn't influence the overall project duration. The project duration still remain ten because ten is getting from the critical activity. So now you notice that. You are doing a useless effort because you reduce activity C by one day. Only activity C is being reduced, but then the overall project duration is not being reduced. See, you do not achieve the objective, but then the cost of the project now already increased five thousand plus fifty ringgit, five thousand fifty ringgit for nothing. So you do not want this thing to happen. You see, if you select the activity uh, wrongly, not only you will basically increase the cost uh, unnecessarily, but then you are not going to reduce the overall project duration. The idea is to reduce the project duration. The cost will be increased, but within uh, the acceptable. But in this situation. We do not have much choice because activity A is the critical activity. Okay, critical activity initially. Initially, only A is critical. Then, how do you do that? You slash uh, the original duration of uh, A ten days. Then it become nine. 
the remaining uh, two more days that you can slash. Now, you do the calculation. Zero plus nine equivalent to nine. How about B? Zero plus nine equivalent to nine. How about C? Zero plus eight. Now, basically, you can reduce the project duration by nine uh, days, or meaning to say by one day, uh, become nine, by reducing only activity A. You do not touch activity B and C because they are not critical. Okay, so now you already increase the project cost by 100. You add back with the normal uh, project cost because it is uh, the normal project cost is initially 5,000. Because you already, uh, when you reduce the project by one day, you will add 100 into the project. Now it becomes 5,100. 5, okay. And the project can be done in nine days only, but there is an increase in cost. Okay, so after you do this, I would say the step, uh, let me call it cycle. The first cycle, cycle number one, we do step by step. Just want to give you example. You don't have to go step by step. You can just go straight away into whatever the targeted reduction that you want to achieve. But now I'm just showing you step by step. You notice that after we complete cycle number one, now activity B become critical suddenly. This is exactly what step number five is all about. Initially, there is only one critical part, which is A. But then after you complete cycle one exercise, you already get 100 extra money that you need to spend. Uh, you can reduce the project by one more day. So, but then you notice that activity B now become critical. So A and B now become critical. Now we go into step number, uh, cycle number two. Let's assume in cycle number two, we want to reduce the project from nine days into eight days, one more days, okay? One more days, we want to reduce uh, one more days. So how do we do that? Okay, because A and B now are critical, if you want to reduce, you cannot simply just choose either one uh, A or B because if you choose either one, they are not going to be uh, to affect the uh, overall project duration. You have to choose both. When you choose both, then you will see the cost, both costs will be add up to the uh, project cost. There will be extra cost. So what to do? There is no other choice. So now from nine become eight. For B, from nine become eight. Then you do the calculation again. So that's why when you do the project time cost straight off exercise, you need to copy the diagram. Uh, you, you need to have the diagram many many copies then only you can do the calculation otherwise it's very difficult to see so based on the calculation then you get eight days but remember how about the cost so now the additional cost 100 from a and then plus 75 from b now it becomes 175 and remember, from the first activity, we get 100. So if we add all up, it becomes 275. So it becomes cumulative. So this is what we call cumulative cost. So now you add up to the original cost, 5,000. So it will become 5,275 ringgit or dollars. And the project can be completed in eight days. You see? Even if you want to reduce uh, from original 10 days into uh, 8 days, by 2 more days only, now there is additional cost that you need to pay. Okay, In this situation, you have no choice because the activity are so limited. There are not so many things that you can choose from. Okay, Now, this is cycle number 2. When you completed cycle number 2, you notice one thing happened. C now is critical. So meaning to say, all the uh, the uh, what we call uh, here, 
now become critical path. All the paths now become critical already. See, it started with only, only A. Now, after the second cycle, B become critical. Now, C become critical. So, the situation is that cycle number three. What if, if we want to reduce one more days from cycle number two? One more days. Meaning to say we want the project to be completed in seven days. So, well, if you want to reduce one more days, remember A critical, B also critical, and C also critical. Meaning to say you have to reduce all the activities, then only this number uh, can be achieved. Otherwise, it cannot from the calculation. So you do the same thing from eight into seven, and then from eight, seven, and then seven. And you notice activity A doesn't have any duration left. Activity B, okay, still have one more day. Activity C, uh, C still have two days. That can be reduced further if you want. Okay. Now, uh, remember from previous uh, cycle, cycle number two, we already have 275 ringgit. Now in cycle number three, okay, A, B, C. A is 100, B is 75, and then C is 50 ringgit. Okay. When you uh, add those things, 225, with uh, 275, you add this thing together, then they become 500. So what could be the new cost? Remember the original cost is 5,000. This is 5,000 equivalent to 10 days. Now you add up 5,000 plus 500, become 5,500, and you can complete the project within seven days. Okay, seven days, all right? So you notice that ah, this is what at the end of the uh, exercise, we can show you something like this. The original project is 10 days, 5,000. 5,000 is given. In reality, you need to calculate, okay? So we already reduced the project by nine days, then you get this value. Eight days, you get these values. Uh, and then seven days, Etc. Etc. We didn't go into uh, six uh, days. Okay, just there, there could be possibility. Okay, that you can reduce further, but this is just an exercise. So you notice that when you draw this kind of graph, uh, or even as a contractor, you already know where basically the cost uh, can go uh, up to how much. Then you can bargain with the client. Let's say the client asks you to reduce the project into how many days, then you can just simply say to the client, okay, I can reduce, but then the cost will be a little bit more. So this is my cost. How do contractor know? Because contractor has already done this exercise. So this is what this topic is all about. Okay, you can basically know uh, roughly, okay, based on the calculation, how much the extra cost that you will need in order to reduce the project. But it looks like this line is the straight line. Okay, straight line. Okay, which is in contrary to what we have shown you before, the graph is a curve. Now, if, for instance, if you have multiple activities, a lot more activities, such as this uh, example, I do not want to go into this example, what I want to show is basically, you notice that the original project uh, is 55 days, but 43 is the one that you can reduce. If we do that, this exercise, so this project original is 55 days and the original cost is 38,800. If uh, you do that step by step or cycle by cycle by cycle and by cycle, and you notice that the graph is basically curve. This is the graph, the curve graph. This curve graph is the one that we 
I already show you at the beginning of the class here. This one is also curve and this one. This is the curve. See, we can use the direct. This could be direct. You see the curve exactly as being shown in this diagram. Okay, as shown in this diagram. Why? In reality, you are going to have those kind of uh, line in reality. It is not it is not a straight line actually. Straight line is for us to um, to show in terms of academic. Otherwise, we are not going to uh, it is very difficult to, to relate. Okay. When you have something linear, it is it is much better to to explain. Okay, but in reality, that is the situation. Okay, so now we want to go into the uh, another example. Okay, another example. Okay, this example normally, even in your final exam question. Um, or even uh, quiz or even whatever. Normally, you are going to be given what we call uh, data. Okay, first data, first data with regard to activity. Because you need to construct the network diagram first. So in order to construct the network diagram, you are given list of activities, the predecessor, and then the duration. But now, uh, extra information is going to be given. The duration that we gave you previously, that is what we call normal duration. Normal time, time or duration is simple thing, similar thing for each activities. Okay. Then cost will be given for each activities. Okay. And you know what? How do you calculate the cost of each project? If you add up all these costs, this is what we call normal cost, normal cost, okay? But how about normal duration of the project? You need to construct the network diagram, then only you know, okay? But uh, for the cost, you can calculate already based on cost for each activity, you know that you can complete the project. Uh, the cost required is 3,050 ringgit, but how about the duration of the project? You need to basically construct the network. Okay, then crash, crash cost, meaning to say, let's say, let's go for the first activity. If you, for first activity, activity zero one, the normal duration is four days. The normal cost is only 210 ringgit. But if you want to compress the project from four days into three days, meaning to say you can compress only one days, you can reduce the, the activity by one day only, but then there is additional cost. Okay, additional cost. How do you know? How do you uh, know the cost? In reality, based on the increase in uh, uh, what we call uh, machine material, uh, material or manpower, extra hours work, etc., etc. Then that is the how the increasing cost is all about. Cost slope. You can calculate cost slope. How do you calculate cost slope? For activity 2 1 is very easy. 280 minus 210 divided by 4 minus 3. You see, 70 divided by 1 equivalent to 70. So this is what we call cost relationship. So you already know if you want to increase, uh, sorry, you if you want to decrease. Uh, activity zero one by one day only, then the cost will be increased by seventy ringgit. That is the, what we call cost slope. Okay, cost slope is an easy way to relate in terms of uh, reduction in uh, activity time and increase in cost. So you can calculate for each cost slope. And in the uh, exercise or even in the exam question, sometimes they do ask. What is the least cost slope among all activities? Where well, the least cost slope, meaning to say the, the cheapest cost slope, the cheapest cost slope would be here, 30. 
activity 3 5 it doesn't uh, cannot be compressed okay so certain activity cannot be reduced anymore that, that is acceptable but if we want to know which one is basically cost the less activity 1 4 all right then first step in order to do this you need to solve the network diagram so we are using AOA diagram why AOA because uh, the question is given like that because it is very much easier to construct AOA diagram and you notice that the uh, what we call uh, the here this is the this one is basically the critical path okay critical path is given okay all right and then you notice one more thing okay you notice one more thing this value what does this value mean 70 in bracket one meaning to say activity zero one go back to this table here can be reduced by only one day and then how much uh, the cost increase 70 ringgit so that's why you put it here 70 one day so that we can you 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 you, you can uh, remember uh, how many days that you can reduce and how much money extra that you need to pay okay now we already established the project will be finishing in 22 days how about the cost of the project the cost of the project is 3050. This is what we call normal cost. This is what we call normal duration of the project. Now, let's uh, go for first cycle. Let's assume in cycle number one, uh, we want to show, we want to, we want to reduce the project duration from 22 days into 20 days so how do we do that okay first thing first focus on critical path you notice activity 0 1 1 2 and 2 4 and 2 5 are the critical path which one you choose to select or to reduce which activity that you want to reduce 0 1 1 2 Two, four and four five it looks like among all the cheapest one would be activity one two is it possible to reduce activity one two because they are interconnecting activities there so you must copy back this uh, diagram and then because you want to put the uh, the uh, what we call the figure early start early finish then only you will see the possibility otherwise it's very difficult okay now this diagram okay this diagram okay let me okay it looks like this is i call it cycle number one cycle number one i reduce by two days two days i want to reduce by two days the issue is that which activity do I choose? It looks like I choose choose activity one, two. Why? First thing first, because it is on the critical path. And then uh, another, another reason, because it is the cheapest cost slope. But then you need to do the calculation. Is it possible or not? Because once you reduce the duration, how do you reduce? Okay, you just slash here from six into four. Okay, because uh, the two days uh, given now become zero. Meaning to say, you cannot reduce activity one, two in the next cycle anymore because you already use up all the available uh, uh, reduction being allowed there. Okay, now you do the calculation. 0 plus 4 equal to 4. 4 plus 4 here equal to 8. Okay, 8 is here. How about the activity 0, 2? Because you need to see whether which one is much more dominant in terms of relationship. 
zero plus eight also here become eight. Okay, then it is okay. Then continue with the calculation. Eight plus five equivalent to thirteen. But then that thirteen is also do have one incoming arrow from up there one four. Now you try to four plus nine equivalent to uh, four plus nine equivalent to thirteen. Okay, so it is acceptable. So now choose activity one four is okay. You can choose that one, and it is the least cost load. So you complete the calculation, then you get twenty. So now you manage to reduce the project by twenty days, and still maintaining the lowest possible increase in cost. Okay, so how much is the cost increase? Okay, the cost increase now fifty. Remember fifty times two equivalent to one hundred ringgit. Okay, one hundred ringgit. Then that is the uh, the cost that you basically uh, have to bear, one hundred ringgit. And if you already know the original cost and the original cost of the project, then basically you can add up with three zero five zero. You add up with that thing, then we come three one five zero. This is a new uh, project cost, and the project can be done in twenty days. Okay, that is the finding. Okay. Now, this is cycle number two. Okay, next, let's say cycle number cycle number one. This is next will be cycle number two. Okay, what if you want to know? Let's say you want to reduce one uh, more days from twenty days. So meaning to say nineteen. Okay, now you do this exercise. Let's say cycle number two. Okay, cycle number two. I call it scenario number one because there are so many scenario that we can play around. Because it is up to uh, to to person who basically reduce, because different person will view things differently. Next, I will show you uh, because of different perspective and view. At the end of the day, um, different people will get different answer. Okay, but which one is the correct answer? Uh, okay, let's say cycle number two, you want to reduce from 20 days into 19 days. Originally, it's 20 days, 22 days. We already reduced 20 days. Now we want to reduce uh, one more days. Okay, what could be the possibility that we can choose? Okay, now you notice that activity one from the previous one, Activity one four now become critical. Previously it was not critical, but after cycle number one, activity one four become critical. Okay, so that is the issue. So, okay, now I need to consider a critical activity which is zero one, one four, two four, and then four five. This one is not critical yet. This one is not yet because this is after cycle number two. Okay. I choose activity um, for this scenario. I choose to crash activity one, four, and two, four. One, four, and two, four. Why one, four, and two, four? Because it is still the cheapest among the critical activities. If I do that, I do the I do the recalculation, and it looks like it is uh, it is acceptable within the uh, uh, what we call uh, the diagram, and you notice that there is an increase of thirty ringgit plus ninety ringgit, which is one hundred and twenty ringgit uh, to the existing uh, to the previous uh, cost three one five zero. At the end of the day, I get three thousand two hundred and seventy. That could be the scenario number one on cycle number two. And you know what? I try another scenario. I call it scenario two. Still on cycle number two. Cycle number two. Still, I wanted to reduce but one uh, more days, but I do take different approach. Now, I choose 
activity four five, which is more expensive. I don't have to crash two activity. I just simply crash one activities. But how about the cost? 150. 150, if I add up to previous one, now I get 3300. In scenario number one, I get much cheaper one, 3270. But now I still achieve my objective uh, 90 days, but then the cost, which is much more expensive. So, what does this thing tell us? Okay, now we go into this diagram, uh, this table. How do you read this table? Okay. Okay, this table, it shows variation of the uh, duration with regard to the cost. Initially, 22 days is the original, and the cost is 3050. Okay, this is the original. Eh? This is what we call normal duration and normal cost. Okay, now if we want to reduce into 20 days, this is what we, we got in cycle number one. Let's say this is cycle number one. Okay, we managed to get 3150. But then in cycle number two, number two here, the, uh, this table give different answer, 3260. Whereas our answer is 3270 and 3300. You see? Different answer. So the question is that which answer is the right answer? Uh, now we go into this uh, figure. Okay, this figure, if you can understand by looking at this, I'm not sure whether you can understand. Let me explain. Okay, normal duration is 22 days. And normal cost is 30350. Okay, we already established that. If we go for 20 days, you notice that this is the amount that we get 3150. Easily, we can, we can get that uh, uh, amount easily. But then the issue is 90 days. The, this table gives 3260, whereas the one that we get is 3270. And then Three three zero zero. So, meaning to say, if we do have fifty people in in our class, if everyone doing this kind of exercise, if you are not being careful, if you are on a rush, for instance, just want to to get uh, the project completed in ninety days, but then if you choose the uh, activity that you want to reduce wrongly meaning to say you can still achieve that thing but then the cost is not going to be the same there are people who basically can complete the project in 19 days but with the higher cost how much is the higher cost that you can go this is the limit the maximum is here this is what we call maximum this is the minimum minimum the one that I show you, this is the scenario number one. Scenario number two, I didn't do many more scenario. I get something in between. But if the question say, the cost that, uh, the, the question one in exam or whatever, the question simply mentioned at least cost, the one that I did, scenario number two and scenario number two, one that is basically do not fulfill the criteria of least cost. The only correct question, uh, the only correct answer is basically 3260. That is the only correct question. How we can achieve 3260? Well, by looking at this table, it looks like uh, creativity play a very important aspect. It, it looks like uh, this solution choose different activity. See, choose activity zero one, choose activity zero one two, and choose this activity two four simultaneously. <laughs> Meaning to say, you mix and mesh. When you mix and mesh uh, creatively, then only 
uh, sorry, then only basically you can get this uh, value 3260. Otherwise, you are going to get a different value. Okay, there are a range of possibility. You see, you notice 3260 until 4180. There are many possibility that you can get, but none of uh, value that you put in between will fulfill the least cost because the our objective is always the same. We want to achieve a reduction in a project a project duration uh, at the least cost, at the lowest possible increase in project cost. We can do that by mix and match or being creative. You need to look at the overall project very closely. Otherwise, you are you're still going to get the answer, but your answer is not going to be accurate. That is the, the issue. Okay, now the last example. We take uh, just a five minute break before we go into our last example here. Okay, last example. Okay, let's assume we are given this kind of information. Uh, activity duration is given so that we can uh, draw the network diagram. That is the idea. We always, everything we start with network diagram. So we need information with regard to what are the activities. And then normal duration is given. Okay, normal duration is given. But then predecessor has to be given as well. Predecessor supposed to be given but that's okay we just start with the uh, the drawing uh, straight away and then crash duration this is what we call n d this is what we call crash d c d crash duration normal cost is given n c and then crash cost c c okay everything is given the next step uh, first step is basically you need to construct the network diagram the second step, you need to calculate the cost slope. How to calculate the cost slope? Again, the formula cost slope is equivalent to the differences in the cost, crash cost minus normal cost divided by normal duration uh, minus crash duration. Okay, for instance, uh, activity A. Uh, crash cost would be 14,000. 12,000 is the normal cost divided by 120 minus 100. So you get 4,000 divided by 20. Okay. So you will get this uh, 200. 200. Uh, ringgit divided by 200 ringgit per day. So now, see, this is what we call, I'm using AOA diagram, AOA diagram. I construct the network and what I get is basically the normal duration for this project, normal duration is 140 days. Okay. The previous normal duration is for activity only, but for the project, Okay, for the project is 140 days. So we want to establish those things. And we construct the network so that we know the critical path. And in all activities, we are going to mention, uh, this one is, sorry. Okay, for this one, activity uh, A, uh, 20 days that we can crash and 100 ringgit. Okay. Per, uh, this is what we call cost slope. You can calculate the cost slope using that formula, each of the activity. So you indicate this one so that you will not forget. Okay. You will not forget. And from this one, you already know which one is basically the lowest cost slope. Okay. Now, there is a twist uh, into this question in such a way now the cost given is only uh, we assume 
as a direct cost. The cost given is direct cost. This, all this cost is basically, uh, sorry, this cost is basically direct cost. The indirect cost is given as a rate, let's say, let's say 50 ringgit per day. So it depends very much on the duration of your entire project. When you add up indirect cost plus direct cost, then only you will know the total cost. Okay, now we want to calculate what is the indirect cost first. So since it is 50 ringgit, then you already know that it is 140 days. So 50 times 140, you already know the indirect cost. How much is the indirect cost? Is 7,000. I already calculated here. And how much is the normal cost? Okay, normal cost is easy. This is normal cost. You add up all this value, okay, all this activity. This value will become, how much is that? 48, you add up this value, equivalent to 48,300. This is what we call normal cost. Very easy. Okay. So you already have the normal cost here. Normal cost, that is the direct cost. So what is the total cost? Direct cost plus the indirect cost. So equivalent to 55,300. This is what we call the beginning. Yeah? So now we already established the normal cost for the project is 55,300. Okay, so we establish this thing first. And the project is running for 140 days. Now, let's assume we want to compress the project into whatever days that uh, require. Uh, let's assume that we, we are going to show the exercise step by step. Okay, we do not, how, we do not know. Sometimes the question will tell you how many days the project need to be compressed. Sometimes you want to know the, the maximum limit that you can compress. So I do one. Okay, now let's say cycle number one. Okay, cycle number one, I want to reduce, reduce by 10 days. The project duration by 10 days. So first step, you go back to this uh, line, uh, to this diagram, focus on critical path. Next, you focus on the cost slope value. Okay, you already know the critical path is B, C, D, E. Uh, B, C, D, E. So based on B, C, D, E, F is not critical path. F is only, the critical path appear only at the end of cycle one exercise. So this is not the critical path. The critical path is only B, C, D, E. And among B, C, D, E, which one is the lowest cost slope? It looks like the lowest cost slope is here, 60. So can we choose D? I would say crash activity D only. Then I need to do the, the calculation. So the way to do the calculation is basically to, uh, I already slash 30, uh, now the activity become 20 days. Uh, so now 10, 10 uh, days available, no more available, zero. So meaning to say activity D cannot be crashed anymore in the next cycle. Now I'm crashing activity D only. So when I uh, do the calculation again for the activity network, 60 plus 20 equivalent to 80, but do check with other activity, the incoming activity where the the value will be which one is going to, to be uh, into the node. Okay, make sure you check those things. It looks like crashing activity D is okay. It is possible. Then only we get 130s. Okay, so we crash activity D and automatically we achieve our objective 130. It looks like uh, there is no other alternative because D is the cheapest one. So no need to venture into other scenario. So we already achieved our objective. But then how much is the increase in cost? Okay, extra cost here. Extra cost, 
Activity D is uh, you already crashed 10 days and each day is 60. 60 times 10 equivalent to 60, uh, 600 ringgit. Okay, 600 ringgit. So actually, the extra cost that you need require is basically plus 600. But then, this is direct cost. Direct cost. How about indirect cost? Remember, you slash the project from 140 into 130, meaning to say you already reduced by 10 days. Each day, the cost of indirect cost is 50 ringgit. Actually, you can do this kind of calculation instead of following my note there. 50 is the reduction time 10 equivalent to minus 500. Minus 500 meaning to say the reduction in uh, indirect cost. So the net is only 100 ringgit. 100 ringgit from what? From the previous here, from the previous what we call uh, total cost. So you can uh, do that. You can add this one into 500, uh, 55, 300, then it becomes 55, 400, similar to the one that I did. This is a new, uh, new cost for 130 days. Okay, so I already uh, get that thing. All right, now that will be cycle one. After cycle one, then there is a formal uh, formation of a uh, new critical path, which is F. Okay, next, let's say I want to reduce another 10 more days. I'm, I'm showing you step by step, which is not necessary. You can just go straight away. Okay, but I'm just showing you step by step. The next cycle, I want to reduce another 10 more days. Okay, 10 more days. I call it cycle number two. Okay, reduce, reduce another 10 more days. And remember, B, C, D, D, we cannot do anything anymore because it is completed already. E and F uh, is critical path based on cycle number two. A is not critical path yet. Only after completion of cycle two, then it looks like every, every pass are critical. So now focus on B, C, E, and F uh, only. So what to crash? If we need to crash another 10 more days, what to crash? Well, it looks like this one, 600, 200, 300, and 120, which one is less expensive? E would be possible. Now let's try crash activity E. What would happen? You need to do the recalculation whether it is uh, it is feasible or not. It looks like when you slash 50, remaining 40, then uh, normal activity D, E that you can crash. So please add, uh, do the calculation. 80 plus uh, 40 equivalent to 120, but do look at this uh, uh, arrow coming from A there. It looks like A is 120, so it is okay. So now we can basically crash activity uh, by 10 days, we achieve 120 days. And then the extra money that involved is basically, because it is 120 per day, we 120 times 10, which is equivalent to uh, 1,200 additional, but then we reduce by 10 days. So the indirect cost is being reduced. The net Additional cost is only 700. So this 700, you add to the previous slide, uh, 54,500. If you add to 54, 50, oh, sorry, 55,400, then by right, you should get 56,100. 56,100 is 420 days. Okay, now you already know the new cost. Uh, for 120 days. But now, after doing cycle number two, it looks like all the paths are critical. So if you want to reduce further, it looks like you now have to crash multiple paths. When you crash multiple paths, you must select the best one, but then expect the cost to be increased further. Now, cycle number three. 
Cycle number three, let me reduce five more days. Five more days only. Five more days only. Why five more days? Because it looks like B, uh, E and D, we cannot, we cannot crash anymore. The remaining is only A, C, and F that we can crash. But B only available crash is only five days. Uh, C and uh, A, C and F is still okay. A lot more that we can crash. But B is the issue. Only available five more days. Okay, now, if I want to crash B alone, it's not going to, uh, to, to, to put what we call to make it uh, into overall project duration since they are interconnected I do need to crash activity A and B okay A and B uh, because they are still the cheapest and they do influence the overall project duration okay I choose that that one so if I crash A A is 500 five days by five days each day is 100 is 500 B is uh, 200 Time five, which is equivalent to one thousand. So the pot, the increase of course is uh, one thousand five hundred, but then the reduction in term of uh, indirect cost is here, two hundred and fifty. I consider it is negative. Then the net would be one thousand two hundred and fifty, and it should be uh, if you add up to the previous cost here, the previous cost. 56, 100, you should get this one. Okay, uh, that is the example. Okay, 115. Can we further reduce okay, the uh, project duration? We go into cycle number four. Five more days. More days. You can straight away reduce by 10 days from cycle number two into cycle number three, but I'm just showing you step by step. Not necessarily like this. Okay, this is just straightforward uh, because the activity are not so many. We can see clearly which one is affected. So D, E, and B cannot be reduced anymore. So what's left is basically A, C, F. So if you want to reduce five more days, it looks like all the activity you need to reduce. Okay, you need to reduce A by uh, five more days. 5 times A equivalent to 500. B, uh, B cannot. B, you cannot do that. C, C equivalent to 6 times 5, 3,000. Very expensive. F, 3 times 5, 1,500. So you just notice this is the plus one. But the negative one is only 250. Uh, if you add this one together, that would be three, four, five. Okay. This one is plus 500. This one is 200. So the net would be uh, around, the net would be around 4750 net. If you add to the previous value, you should get this value. Okay. You should get that value. And that is your new course, and you can reduce, you can complete the project in 110 days. So the question is that, can you reduce further? Cycle number five. Well, there is no more cycle number five exercise in my diagram here, but actually by looking at the network, you can, you can reduce until uh, perhaps 105. Why? Because activity C, you can the remaining is only five more days. So if you want to reduce, you have to reduce A, C, and F together. And C can only be reduced up to five. Whereas A and F still available. If you do that, perhaps you will uh, uh, get 105 and then increase the cost by this, this, this much also. Okay? So you will get something like 60... 6,850. That could be the new course, and you can reduce the project by uh, ultimately 105 days. Okay, if you do that, 
that is what we call completely crash a project until you cannot simply crash anymore. So as we mentioned earlier, it is really feasible to completely crash a project. Okay, normally the client or because as we mentioned, when you reduce further, sometimes the cost will be very high. It is not, it is not going to be uh, uh, in economic situation. It might not be uh, good. There is no point of you rushing the project completed much earlier and then the cross will be skyrocketed. Well, you can just simply spread. The uh, duration could be longer, but then the cost will be reasonable. Okay, so that's why sometimes in the question, in, in the academic exercise, we just set some uh, amount of time that you need to crash. And based on that time, please use your creativity, look at the best possible combination of activity at the least uh, cost slope, then basically do the uh, networking diagram, and then only you will get the, uh, what we call value. So I remind you, if you want to solve the, this type of question, crashing question, you simply cannot just simply looking at the diagram or without the diagram, you need to come out with the network diagram. That is step by step, then only you can you can see the whole uh, calculation. All right, with that, huh? uh, this is your quiz number six. Okay. If you look at your slide, which I already given you much earlier, there are a few questions. Question number 18, question number 19 and 21, question uh, 31 is all together there. And then question number 34, question number 22, 23. This question are basically based on the previous final exam question. I just uh, took some example there. So I want you to do this uh, quiz number six. Please submit uh, to my assignment email or the, the same assignment that you previously sent your assignment one and two, okay? I give you uh, the deadline is one week from today. So meaning to say by next week, by next Wednesday, uh, you should basically uh, submit, okay? You should submit uh, what we call uh, my, uh, your quiz number six to my email, okay? There is no uh, Google form or whatever, but the quiz number six is based on all this question and this question you need to show the calculation even though it is an objective question but in order to get uh, to the to the answer you need to show some of the calculation the question uh, q18 is very simple but then when it comes to question 1921 then you need to draw the network diagram similar to what we have shown you before then only you can get the answer, not just by simply looking at uh, this value and you spot the, no, no, you cannot do that. You need to come up with the drawing. Okay. All right. So uh, that is the end of our class today. Let me stop the recording.